Hi, welcome to a video of my flea market and record seller finds uh, for Sunday, uh, September 1st, 2024. In the morning, I went to the flea market, didn't find too much because I, I got there just a little bit too late and some picker was getting all the good stuff from a, a big box of records at one dollar so i got uh consolation prices i decided to get the everybody's seen this italian series of records with big names with always like lesser tracks these were i suspect records he, he john travolta made for uh I forgot the name of the label because in Canada it was on RCA uh, but anyway uh, I thought that the cover was interesting and uh, I haven't checked the record yet but although I don't speak it I don't read Italian but never seen the one with John Drove who are one dollar so and the other one is a 12 inch record with a misspelling on the label I have the 40, the regular 45 of Sar Band Mephisto with on the other side is Magic Mandrake. This is Mephisto, they misspelled the name. It's, and it's a six minute version. On the other side it's the, a three minute version, short version. So I played it, it plays pretty good. I'm really glad I got Usually Unidisc had, especially the early Unidisc, I'm always trying them out when I, the price is right and the condition. Very interesting stuff. Uh, so I got these two records at that table and the guy had something else that I wanted to buy but he said oh I have more in the truck uh, so I decided oh, I'll come back later I knew nobody would buy uh, you'll see in a moment so uh, at another table I found this a uh, Snoopy uh, bank from 1970 it's missing the uh, the plug uh, right there unfortunately the seller was the original owner of this bank I just thought that Snoopy was just too cute to pass and I come I bundled it up with this other item as a record collector I needed to get this it's a plush nipper see so you have RCA on the collar RCA nipper tag here and a little booklet which I haven't read yet uh, well a booklet what am I saying a little tag here the world's most famous dog is Nipper RCA. So this goes really well with uh, my sign there. <laughs> so I got both for six dollars. Yay! Really glad about that. And then I went back to the table of the man uh, that sold me the two records earlier, and he had added a few more in the box. So I got two more records. This one had I, the reason I d took the record out is because it was water damage it was still wet so I know where he got this he, uh, so I took a sniff to make sure it didn't smell like sewage actually it smells like mothballs <laughs> oddly enough so I so said okay I'll, I'll take it had it smelled like sewer sewage I would have left it there so it's uh, I didn't even read the name of the band New York City I'm doing fine now uh, ho I was hoping for funk it's um, it's not as funky as I want it to be but it's a nice beautiful label there uh, it's a US pressing so it's not bad it's not it's not just as funky as I hope it would be but uh, for a dollar despite the water damage this I tried you had two copies of this stray dog while you're down there so for it's sealed for you know from England uh, but turns out I don't like it. I have, I have one more song to because I'm listening to it on YouTube, obviously, not to open it. But you know, if I'm sure there is an inner sleeve in there, I might open it just to recuperate the inner sleeve and get rid of the album for it. So I got these for two dollars, and this is what I saw. You had a empty reel-to-reel -reel, reel made of metal. Which I'm not crazy about because it doesn't have any um, any uh, slit to put the bit of tape through, so it's, it's a little bit hard to thread because of that. But it's I've never seen one in its box, and a brand new 1800 feet, well 1801 uh, BASF reel-to-reel tape never opened. 
what he did say that he had more that's why I wanted to wait but all the, he had like five four or five of them but they were all 2400 feet the tape is too thin I hate 2400 feet this is the equivalent of a 90 minute cassettes 2400 feet is the equivalent of like uh, two hour tapes and if you're not old enough to remember two hour tapes the, the tape was really thin like way too thin so I've only took these two for two dollars each plus these two records so another eight bucks well that's it for the flea market that's all I found because all the, the good records were, were taken by um, oh no that's not true one more purchase right there uh, I don't know what came over me right now I'm li I don't want to watch the news uh, so when I eat in the kitchen we have a TV in the kitchen old TV CRT all our TVs are CRTs <laughs> I don't know what came over me I got these six Disney movies in English on VHS Fox and the Hound Pinocchio Bambi Lady in the Tramp Peter Pan and Aristocats I think I already have all of these uh, <laughs> somewhere in the basement, but I got the six tapes for five bucks just to have something to watch in the kitchen. I felt like oh, I'll watch these again. It's easier to just save the lady five bucks than waste time digging boxes, two boxes of stuff downstairs. It's really getting serious when I start buying stuff a second time because it's faster and easier. <laughs> <laughs> going to it's so ridiculous when I okay so uh, that's it for the flea market now we'll look at this stack in a second sorry about that I need to make space here and I went back to the the guy who sold me a whole bunch of records the, the day before and I got this stack plus another record that I stashed away because I don't want any spoilers sometimes I, I, I go like this and that and you see what's coming up so I got this stack for one hundred dollars plus it helped reduce the price of the uh, the expensive more expensive uh, record that I got at the end so we'll look uh, the guy hates 78 he had barely any I saw Jail House Rock by Elvis it was cracked uh, completely broken he had another record uh, Fontaine Sisters I think that I wanted to have and it was completely broken another rock one I don't remember but I found this three record album in good shape. I played the whole thing, it's pretty nice. I played it on my little uh, Electro Home Apollo 862. Norman Gratz's Jazz at the Philharmonic Volume 9. Uh, I'll just take this out because that doesn't belong. Uh, so we have this. Yeah, I don't know any of the uh, musicians, but pretty good. And it, with these three records, I've added this one. Rock and Roll Music by Chuck Berry. That one wasn't broken. Unfortunately, there's a sticker on the label. The other side had what looked like some heat damage. Which is very tricky because sometimes it comes off or... Well, in this case, we still see it. Or sometimes... Okay, here you can see it. In this case, we don't hear it much or at all. <laughs> I was so happy because... He didn't care. So I got the 378 album plus this Ford 78 for five bucks. So that's a dollar twenty-five for rock and roll music by Chuck Berry, which I played already, and it's fine. All these, so these were five bucks. Again, we had uh, some records. I know how much they were. Nothing in this stack higher than five dollars, I think. I don't think was there any. No, no, that's not true. There's some. Uh, no, 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 nothing higher than five bucks in this pile here. But I did the same thing because it was just a, a price for the stack. I uh, I had to uh, make up some prices along to show you how much I think I've paid for stuff. This and the following one I saw the the day before, but I left them behind. I didn't, you know, I didn't. I I already got the uh, opening cover of A Date with Elvis in mono with the calendar but I only own a copy in mono but a late 60s pressing with a, or a fig vinyl orange label in mono inside a stereo cover that's how I found it at 4 dollars in the 1990s at the store used record store so I should get this just for the cover so I have a mono cover because the record inside is eh, you know 
unfortunately the record is uh, is plays better than I thought so now I'm stuck leaving keeping and leaving the record because it, it, it's it's uh, at least a, an original uh, like this <laughs> so I have three I'm starting to have so many copies of this record because for a longest time I was looking for a mono copy and this although it's in rough shape I just couldn't leave it there for five bucks this is the second copy that I've ever seen and also purchased because I bought the two copies I've seen in my life of LOC 1035. This is, in case you didn't know, Elvis's Christmas album from 1957, the original first pressing. Ta da! I bought a copy many years ago for 50 cents in a yard sale. My copy uh, that I already have, the record is in better shape except for a dual tank sticker on the label. The pages of the, the photos that you will see in a second were in the other one I have is in better shape. This one has a tear on one of them, a little water damage as well. Not a recent water damage. But this one has the spine, although the spine is cracker. The other will copy I have, all of this is all done. It's holding because there's a spine inside. Um, but we see Elvis Christmas, Elvis's Christmas album. Elvis Presley LOC 1035 and if you've never seen this let me open it here there we go and it has some water damage some sort of staples there I don't understand how the pretty powerful I don't know what that shit is there, and there's a tear there, water damage and staple hole. But this was five bucks. I said I, I just can't leave it there. If I ha if I cross, uh, if I, if I meet somebody who likes Elvis and dreams of finding this record, I'll be glad to pass it on to to him. So and what you could be get in 1957. I might just keep it because this one at least doesn't have any stickers on the, the record. So in Canada it was the RCA Victor original cast series. And uh, it has a, what looks like a terrible scratch, but actually it plays better than it looks. So if I didn't already have a copy, I would be so stoked to, to find this. I'm still pleasantly happy to get this for five bucks because a, a, a condition, a good condition copy. I mean, I mean, in VG plus plus or something like that. Uh, you're reaching the three digits at that point. I mean, I haven't looked recently at uh, Discogs, but this is hard to find. So I have two copies of this now. So I got this for five bucks. And in case you you see something here, only today. I realize, oh my god, these three pictures come from this. Right here. I want to open the pages to show you again those two photos. You get the picture. No pun intended. This was 10, marked down to 5. It looks terrible. I said, mm, if you put a 10, maybe it plays better than it looks new. It plays terrible. I, I should have just passed. Uh, although he did let me have it for 5. Uh, at least the cover is in okay shape, no tears, no... Maybe one day I'll find a better, uh, an upgrade of the vinyl, but the terrible record cover, so I'll... Anyway, so I could have passed. Poème et chant de la Résistance 3. Je l'ai plus parce qu'ils vont des chants dessus, mais j'arrivais pas à me rappeler si la copie que j'avais... Si je l'avais acheté ou pas, je l'avais déjà vu dans un magasin à Laval, mais je savais pas si je l'avais acheté ou pas. Puis en plus, je savais pas, me semble que j'avais vu une scratch dessus. Celui que j'avais déjà vu, soit acheté ou pas. J'étais tellement confus, je garde prends pas de chance, prends-les. I wasn't sure if I had, I knew I had seen this at a store a few years ago. I couldn't remember if it had a scratch or not. And if I had, because of the scratch, bought it or not bought it, just buy it. It's five bucks. If you, if you pass and you realize that one day when you, that your copy has a scratch, you'll be pissed off that you left it behind. Uh, this is a terrible purchase. I don't know what came over me. It looked like a good condition until I realized somebody marked uh, the edge of the cover in black uh, Sharpie. 
and the record although looks great it plays like crap it's in terrible shape so a stupid purchase I, I decided this would have come to two dollars this is a five or five dollar record the Baler Marchand dans la Plaine it actually plays better than it looks I didn't have that one yet Fabulous Ventures plays well it's in stereo but you know, a little bit of groove wear the cover looks better than the record Oh, I didn't see somebody wrote there oh my god I just saw that for the first time <coughs> but I didn't have that one and the, the Pink Pen 13 played on guitar actually works it's actually a, a good record five bucks this I decided it would be a three dollar record 34 or 35 Fats Waller it's a US pressing it's in perfect shape not a, not a single uh, issue with it I'm pretty glad I got this is a terrible record well terrible I don't know yet I suspect that all the cheering the the, 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 the screams the girl screams I, I suspect they were overdubbed and there's just too much of it I was just doing spot checks and non-stop girl screaming I don't know if they were that popular the, the crowd picture doesn't match the screaming I hear on the record to the whole you know so I just hate fake cheers and fake crowd but I had to try it I'm, I don't have many Jen and Dean records this uh, yeah I decided it was a two dollar record although it's a double album it's uh, French old French stuff from 1931 all the way to 1956 a lot of 1930s songs most of them a few from the 1940s it's just that I have so much of this stuff already and I never listened to it but I love the cover with all the sheet music just just for the cover I mean and of course a French pressing and I have to I have to uh, so this comes to two dollars let's say bad purchase Johnny retien la nuit uh, terrible groove wear on this record I had no way of knowing without playing it and the w odd thing is that the, the, the groove wear is mostly on the right side the right channel that's pretty rare but since it's a stereo record you need both channels you can't just play the other channel you can't cheat on a, on a mono record when you have like a groove where that's only on one side anyway five bucks this one five bucks looks pretty worn right it plays really fine and it has Loiseau is a great song uh, arrangements by Arthur Greensdale and he, Green Slade, sorry, I just realized it's Green Slade, Archer Green Slade, and he orchestrated some F Serge Gainsbourg records. And it's a great orchestra, so I'm really glad I got this. It looks worse than uh, than it plays. This I'm I can't wait to listen to this. It's a double album called An Evening with Groucho. Comes to five bucks. Great photo there. Uh, when I was checking it to see the condition, I had a hard time not letting it play through because oh, Montreal. He's mentioning Montreal. Can't wait to play this. The Shadows Rarities. I think it's how many tracks? 16 tracks. It's really good. I've played a few. Uh, the Shadows. I think it's like a British version of the Ventures. I love this. I'm glad I got this. Really, really. Jen and Dean folk and ro uh, folk and roll F five bucks. Uh, problem with this is it's in mono, but it's a record that would have benefited from being in stereo. Otherwise, mm, it's good. Coucou me revoilu Michel Palnareff five bucks. Um, has a little bit of groove wear. Dirish un tout petit peu. Pas son meilleur disque, mais il est pas pire. Pour cinq pièces, je le vois jamais en plus. This I decided I would put as a two dollar record because I left it there in the two dollar section the day before. Decided to it was just too interesting. It's a compilation slash soundtrack, and the B side had some some uh, in, some great uh, funky uh, music on it. So yeah, two dollars. This is an upgrade for the cover. Of, this, uh, of the other one I bought the other day, the day before, and uh, decided that it comes to three dollars, 
to make it a five dollar to add to the two dollars I already paid for the other copy with the big number on the corner and uh, it, this one I think is a US pressing yeah so I have a Canadian pressing and a US pressing but uh, both play well so yeah two copies of that that I bought a little bit too fast plus I'm not sure if I have this already or not uh, super group adventures I didn't pay attention but it's not a um, uh, Liberty record but it's a sunset I should have known it's a repackaging of slash compilation uh, it has only 10 songs the whole album seems to be about 21 minutes long but it plays well but it's yeah for five bucks now I should have passed and the more I look at the sleeve the more I think I already have this unfortunately 245s I decided they come to 50 cents each although he was asking for a dollar each just around to make up uh, a price for each record since I don't know how much I paid for each record when my tears have dried by Jimmy Gilmer and uh, fireballs and daisy petal picking it's in pretty great shape not a scratch but uh, turns out this song I already have on an album oh, wait. this is uh, an empty sleeve the record wasn't there but I know I have the record I couldn't remember if I had the sleeve or not I don't know if I had the or not you don't think about that avec on a juste large par Dominique Michel j'ai déchiré au milieu je n'étais pas sûr si j'avais déjà la pochette ou pas j'ai pas pris de chance de toute façon j'avais une j'avais besoin d'une pochette pour un disque que j'ai pris je n'ai pas de sleeve anyway for um, I have the record but I wasn't sure if I had the sleeve Be My Guest by Fats Domino and uh, I'm, I've been around needs cleaning otherwise it plays really well for its age it's a 50s 45 when you have the 45 prefix in this case I'll put this back. These are two dollar records. These I'm sure were two dollars. Jacques Blanchet aujourd'hui. Chansonnier. It's in mono, unfortunately. Uh, L'heure de la bonne humeur. What time is it? Okay, nine o'clock. L'heure de la bonne humeur au Café Saint-Jacques avec Lyon, La Chance et Rod Tremblay, invité Jean-Pierre Masson et Claude Landry. J'ai pris ce disque parce que Jean-Pierre Masson, bien sûr, c'était l'acteur qui jouait Séraphin. Claude Landry, je collectionne ces disques, fait que, regarde, une bonne raison d'acheter. Je ne sais pas s'il si est bon, j'ai checké, il griche pas, pas en tout, il est comme nœud. Je suis pas mal content. Ça, c'est un Holy Grail pour moi. Je, ça fait juste 35 ans que je cherche. Ben, depuis que je fais les magasins de disques usagés, que je cherche ce disque-là. J'arrive pas à me rappeler si je l'ai peut-être déjà vu une fois quelque part dans les années 80-90 dans un magasin de disques usagés à Montréal puis qui avait été trop cher à mon goût je suis même pas sûr que je, même là je suis pas sûr fait que j'ai trouvé j'ai même pas voulu remettre le disque dans la pochette parce qu'il était en train de commencer à déchirer en dessous là. mais ça c'est genre du cep c'est pas sérieux il y a malheureusement des spots ici sur la pochette sinon la pochette est écœurante et le disque est parfait il n'y a pas de scratch ça fait comme je l'ai dit au dessus de 35 ans je cherche ce Christy disque là j'ai lu pour 2 piastres il était dans le pile à 2 piastres mon père avait ce disque là ben en fait il, dans ce qui reste de sa pile de disques il est encore là mais il est bien magané bien bien massacré moi et mon frère on, on y a fait la passe celui-là est en bon état c'est un, un show qui a fait pour une euh, comment on appelle ça donc euh, une corpo pour je sais pas quel euh, groupe de personnes en privé puis quelqu'un a enregistré le spectacle à son insu, puis il a sorti ça en disque. Quand ça sortit, jean Tissep a, a menacé de poursuivre l'étiquette de disque à Pex. Il dit, vous avez demandé de ça du, mar du marché. D'après mon père, je ne sais pas s'il rapporte les faits exactement. Il dit qu'après une semaine, ils l'ont enlevé du marché. Puis ça se peut parce qu'il est rare, il est dur à trouver en tabarnouche. So, basically, what I've explained is that this record my dad had when I was a kid and me and my brother we ruined the record full of scratch we still have it it's in terrible shape I've played it often and Jean Duceppe is a famous theater, theater an important figure in, in Quebec theater but he did this this uh, adult humor stand-up uh, set for a private sh corporation show somebody recorded the show without him knowing and released it on a record and he, he he said he would sue the company if they didn't pull out the record from the market right right away according to my dad I'm not sure if he knew really he said that apparently after a week they took it off the market and I've been looking for this upgrade 
for f over 35 years, which I think it's more or less 35 years I've been going to used record stores. So that's how long I've always had my, my eyes open for this record, never saw it until yesterday. So for two dollars. Charlotte et Hervé en spectacle, Québec, Québec CFR. Et euh, il, est, il est en parfait état, là. il était cœur. Hein. J'en reviens bien de la guerre, Jean d'Arc Charles Le Bois, un upgrade à deux autres copies que j'ai déjà. As-tu vu la bombe? J'ai fait référence à une chanson de, de la bombe atomique, que j'ai fait jouer à Kitsch Bonbon. J'ai fait jouer ça ici aussi. As-tu vu la bombe? Et ça parle de la, la bombe atomique qui tombe sur Hiroshima. Euh, C'est des repiquages de 78 tours, bien sûr. Et celui-là, il joue bien. Il remplace mes deux autres copies. This replaces my... Uh, it's an upgrade to a, a record I've used in a radio show I did in 2005. I mentioned in, my, in one of my previous videos uh, that I had a record... Either that pile there or that one? Oh, I think it's that pile. Uh, a song about... Uh, Le Rille des Bombes Atomiques. And this one is... Uh, As-tu vu la bombe? A song about Hiroshima getting blasted. Uh, and uh, for two dollars and two dollar again. Success des, des années 40 et 50. Willy Lamotte, our biggest uh, uh, Western country, Western star in Quebec, and he had his own TV show and everything. So, uh, yep, and that one hundred dollar pile. If we count these 78s and ninety five dollars of vinyl here, allowed me to get a special record for much cheaper than it was marked. Yes! The Horzu Magical Mystery Tour A1 B3 Mastering. This is a early 80s pressing with a little uh, cassette logo here. For those who don't know, who, those who those don't, are not Beatles fan, this is the best sounding pressing of Magical Mystery Tour. It's uh, all in true stereo, except of course the middle of I Am the Walrus, unfortunately. All five songs on the B side are in true stereo. Penny Lane in true stereo, Baby You're a Rich Man in true stereo. And uh, the only defects on this record is there's a, a, n initials on the label. There's the, the owner wrote his name in Sharpie and we, it's, we see it through here. A, l a few little bands here, if I go, uh, you know, this at least is not, no holes. It plays perfectly, y you have to really nitpick to try to hear a, l a few little pops here and there of, of Grooveware pops, but barely any. If I play it on my Linaxis with my s silver Grado, I'm sure it, it, I won't even hear it. Originally had it at 120 down to 100, crossed it out. On the plastic, he put it at 60, but I tried to negotiate it. He said, oh, I'll let you have it for $30. I said, yes, thank you. But I got it for 30 because I got all this stuff for $100. Had I just come in, picked that one, and said, can I have this for half price? I'm not sure yeah, I would have gotten it. Still, I got this for 30 bucks. And I played it and have fun checking on, on, on YouTube videos about this record. It's an important record if you're a Beatle record a collector. <laughs> I'm stoked that I have this for 30 bucks. Yep, so I, I, it ended with my, my best purchase of the weekend. Thanks for watching.